The film begins with the cutting of frames, at first glance loosely connected with each other. The only important detail that unites them is the presence of green paint, which smears people, windows and even rainwater. In the next scene, an elderly man is sitting in the hospital next to his wife lying in bed. The staff appears and clears the place, escorting out the slightly ill. Instead, the wounded are brought into the wards. The corridors of the hospital are filled with excited people, some of whom are also stained with green paint. The camera flies over the bodies lying on the floor, they are stained with paint and blood. Judging by the open eyes, they are all dead. Behind the scenes, the crackle of automatic bursts can be heard in the distance. The action shifts to the wedding of Mary Ann and Alan. Daniel, the bride's brother, congratulates the newlyweds, he makes a toast to their happiness. At this time, new guests arrive at the mansion. They say that there is a form of chaos on the streets, even they did not want to let the arrivals out of the airport. The parents of the couple are concerned that an important guest, the judge, has not arrived. The absence of such an influential person even suggests, albeit jokingly, to postpone the celebration to a more convenient time. The wife's mother hides the envelope with the donated money in the safe in the bedroom, after which she wants to wash her hands, but there is green water in the tap. Excited, she calls her husband to show him this, but when they return, the water is already a normal shade. Meanwhile, a servant from among the poor citizens is discussing the costume of one of the young men, Christian. Employers gave him clothes for the event, which turned out to be somewhat too big for him. His mother, Martha, is told by the hostess to look for green paint among the servants' belongings, someone brought it to the party. Meanwhile, more important guests are arriving, in particular Minister Victor. As almost a wedding gift, he talks about the construction permit received, which is extremely important for the business of the bride's parents. But conversations about work are interrupted by the young wife of a business old man, and they go to have fun. When the next envelope is sent to the safe, the bride notes that they are making money at her wedding, and as a gift, a part of the bribes that the father pays to the invited officials acts. Another couple of guests come to the party slightly excited. The reason is the green paint, they were sprayed with it along the way, which is not hidden from the excited glances of those present. The tainted woman is hurriedly taken away by the hostess to put in order and not to embarrass the guests. However, the incident did not pass without a trace, the secretary of the minister notices that the car of the arrivals was doused with paint a couple of blocks away. The security recommends leaving urgently and adjusts the cars. The official with his wife, children and nannies quietly leaves the event. At this time, Rolando, an elderly former employee of the owners, comes to the entrance. He asks his former employers to borrow some money for his wife's surgery. The hostess collects a little money from the men, promising to collect the missing amount tomorrow. The old man greets Marianne, whom he raised as a girl. She asks her brother, who is dealing with drugs with young people, to get the missing amount. However, Daniel, having handed over a few thousand more, tries to drive the old man away. Marianne sees this and asks him to stay until she gets the right amount from the safe with gifts in an envelope. But the mother changed the password in advance. Neither the father nor the brother know the new password, which greatly upsets the kind-hearted girl. Pulling her credit card out of her purse, Marianne finds out that the old man has left. She turns to Christian, a servant boy, to show the way to Rolando's house. When they leave, another politically important guest, the judge, comes to the party. The lawyer has another wedding planned for today, so she needs to quickly comply with all the formalities of a congratulatory nature. However, the mother cannot find the culprit of the celebration, and tells Martha to find her daughter. Mariana's car is deployed by the police, the streets are blocked due to mass popular unrest. They have to go roundabout ways, listening to alarming reports on the radio. At this time, the plebs enter the wedding through the fence, ordinary people smeared with frightening rich paint. The owners call the guards, seeing uninvited guests and noticeably afraid of such proximity to the electorate. There are armed men among the proletarians, and they, despite all the exhortations, open fire, revealing a ripening abscess of class hostility and social stratification over the years. Marianne's father is shot, and the guard, himself from among ordinary people, uses a service weapon against employers. The guests are driven into the rooms, only the security guard drags the hostess to the safe. There, the servants are already expropriating from the expropriators what they have acquired dishonestly. After receiving the code from the safe, the guard coolly shoots the woman in the back of the head. The lower class is having a good time in the upper class house, while Martha warns her son and Marianne that it is dangerous to return. By threatening with weapons, the intruders take away from the rich everything they can, 
including money transfers, clothes and jewelry. In general, there is a normal redistribution of material goods. On the roads, commoners throw green paint at the car, a kind of symbol of spontaneous revolution. Christian offers to drive, as he knows the poor areas better than a rich girl. The guy hides Marianne herself in the backseat away from evil eyes. Soon they reach Rolando's house, where they hide the car in the garage. The old man asks his nephew why he brought a rich girl, to which he says that she wanted to take his wife to the hospital. Meanwhile, phones all over the city stop working. People take to the streets and continue their outrages until dark, looting and setting fires. Marianne, in order to avoid trouble, is left overnight in the house, having allocated a room on the second floor. The radio reports that the army is trying to restore order, but so far it is not working too well. Martha, Christian's mother, leaves Marianne's house, where the robbers left a pogrom and a pile of corpses. On the streets, the confrontation between ordinary people and law enforcement agencies continues all night. In the morning, ambulances manage to get to the house where the wedding was taking place. The wounded are taken to the hospital. Marianne listens to the news reports on the radio, she wants to go home. Christian goes on a reconnaissance mission to see if it will be possible to conduct it safely. However, the soldiers literally catch him near the house. After learning that he needs to take a rich girl home, the military takes Marianne with them, promising to deliver her to her family, and the guy is told to stay at home. However, on the way in the back of a truck, soldiers take away the heroine's phone, earrings and watches. Meanwhile, the city is slowly cooling down from the night riots, the streets are full of barricades and corpses, Roads are blocked by military checkpoints, rare shooting can be heard in the distance, and the brave souls who dare to go outside move exclusively by running. The military stores corpses in heaps, walking among the dead with machine guns at the ready. Martha successfully gets home, where her son meets her. Marianne is brought to a closed camp where other prisoners are being held. Most of them are rich people and children of rich parents. Soldiers draw numbers on their foreheads, after which they are interrogated, names, addresses, relatives. They treat them without any piety, for army employees they are just a source of potential profit and redemption. Daniel, Marianne's brother, is approached at the hospital by a funeral home representative to arrange the funeral of his mother and wife. The news continues to tell about the opposition of the army to the rebels. Daniel, along with Alan, turns to Minister Victor for help to find Marianne. Forbidding to contact the press, he entrusts their case to General Oribe, the commander of the troops. Meanwhile, the soldiers in the abduction camp are busy raping prisoners. Marianne gets it, too, while her relatives organize the funeral. The authorities are imposing a curfew at this time. Civilians are allowed to move around the streets only for a couple of hours in the morning and evening to get to and from work. Riots are riots, but production will not produce itself. At the same time, such optional aspects of life as hospitals for the poor are quite closed to themselves, unlike clinics for the rich from where Daniel and Marianne's wounded father is transported. Minister Victor visits the man at home, he promises to find his missing daughter. It turns out that a whole month has passed since the beginning of the riots and her disappearance. Exhausted by the shortage of servants, relatives want to involve even the nurse of the owner of the house in cleaning, despite the fact that she does not like the misuse of her talents in education. People abducted by soldiers record video messages to their relatives, in which they are asked to pay the required ransoms so that they can finally be released. One night Rolando leaves the house to call a doctor for his sick wife. But as soon as he approached the checkpoint blocking the exit from the poor area, the soldiers interrupted his life with a single shot. Then, without waiting for the doctor, his wife dies, Christian attends their funeral a day later. Daniel receives a call from the kidnappers with a recording of his sister's voice. The bandits want to get a ransom, 10 million pesos. Having arranged a mass washing for the victims so that the presentation does not deteriorate, the soldiers discuss who will receive what share of the ransom, but even among them there is no unity, everyone tries to cheat the other. Dissatisfied with the small share of the military, who kidnapped Marianne, return to Christian's house, where they once found the heroine. They demand a ransom from them, 800,000 pesos, for which it is necessary to contact Mariana's family. While the other prisoners are being tortured, Christian is trying to find a way to get through the checkpoints to the employer's house. He manages to find a work permit for himself and his mother, which allows them to leave the area of residence. Daniel and Alan appeal to the minister and the general with a video recording of the torture of prisoners and a ransom demand. According to the head of the security forces, this data should be enough to figure out the attackers. Upon reaching Marianne's family home, 
Christian tells Daniel that the soldiers are demanding a ransom from him for his sister. After conferring with his father, Daniel allocates the necessary money without calling the minister and his tame general. While they are thinking about how the servants will transfer the money through the checkpoints, Marianne witnesses how one prisoner is taken out of the cage, a ransom was paid for him. However, as soon as he was taken out, a shot is heard, hinting that the prisoner did not see freedom. Christian and Marta return home in the evening, carrying money under their clothes. Soldiers are already waiting for them near the house, having received their money, they change the terms of the deal. The first amount is only an advance, tomorrow they need another million pesos. When Daniel and his father find out about this, they decide that the servants are in a share with the kidnappers and wants to cash in on them. After that, the rich get in touch with Minister Victor, accusing Christian and his mother of kidnapping. In the evening, General Oribe's special squad waits for the soldiers at Marta's house while Christian lures them inside. The general tells them to take off their masks, after which the special forces load the servants and soldiers into cars and go with them to the prisoner camp. Inside, they find Marianne among dozens of prisoners and take her outside. Soldiers are already kneeling there, tied up in dirty business, realizing what they have got into, some are silently sobbing. After the girl is led past and put into the car, shots are fired, the soldiers who are stained with bloody business are executed one by one. The special forces pour gasoline over their bodies and set them on fire, covering their tracks. Marianne, wiping the shameful number from her forehead, is taken to Christian's house. The girl is taken inside, the guy who saved her is sitting on the bed waiting. Behind the scenes, there is a quiet shot of a pistol with a silencer, from which he shudders. A special forces soldier enters the bedroom and hands him a gun, then leads him out of the room. Christian manages to notice the murdered Marianne in the bathroom, after which the fighter shoots him in the head, and he falls dead. In the next scene, Minister Victor calls Daniel. The guy is being taken home to Christian, where the general is already. In the final scene, the minister, the general and Mariana's father are watching the death penalty of several criminals, among them Marta. She is executed for the abduction and murder of a girl who law enforcement agencies covered up the crimes of the Mexican army during the popular unrest, so that they would not have to investigate crimes and corruption, and inadvertently not come out on themselves. At this point, the film ends with a brave march.